kufuatana na marafiki wengine ambao wakanitumbukiza kwa madawa nilikuwa na taxi yangu ikafanya e, mpaka dawa ikafanya nikauza hivi I involved myself with company of friends who introduced me to drugs I had my own taxi and the drugs made me sell the taxi so that I would maintain my lifestyle by that time the drugs used to be sold at 200 but now they sell at 300 Kenya shillings the drug itself is a very small thing i even do not know what i would equate it to That was Juma, one of the people who seemed to be affected by drugs, narrating to me how it all started. Youths from the slum areas are the ones who seem to be affected by this problem. I talked to some of them and these were their views. Okay, according to me, wana take drugs kwa sababu wengi wako idol, wanafanya kazi hizi casual casual. Kwa slums kuna changa dance mingi. Alafu there are no proper role models. So there's no one to guide the youth on what they should do and what they shouldn't do drug is a bad thing and i think it's the high time that youth stop abusing drugs according to many researches conducted by different ngos and drug dealing institutions it has shown that the key risk periods for drug abuse are during major transition in children's lives The first big transition for children is when they leave the security of the family and enter school. Later when they advance from elementary school to middle school, they often experience new academic and social situations such as learning to get along with a wider group of peers. It is at this stage, early adolescence, that children are likely to encounter drugs for the first time. I talked to psychologist Dennis Kinywa and these were his sentiments. So drug seems to have three main roots. Number one, it's the person himself. So the person uh, that means that generally a person has different things or uh, reasons as to why he consumes drugs or takes drugs. Number one, it could be due to curiosity. This person is so much curious to take drugs just because maybe he saw some some people taking those drugs. It could be due to addiction. This person has already taken drugs for a very long time and therefore he has become addicted to these drugs and he cannot be able to leave them. Number two, it could be due to the own background or the family. This person comes from a place where they have gotten used to taking drugs, maybe the father or the mother has gotten used to taking these drugs and therefore he or she does not have any other option other than to get into the line of taking these drugs. And number three, it's the own the community it comes from a place where maybe the the whole community or the clan is a is a just a place where they generally take drugs and therefore he cannot be able to get out of these drugs and therefore he or she consumes these drugs alcohol substance and drug abuse among urban slum adolescents is not only a risky behavior in the era of hiv and aids but also a potential security threat to a growing city based on the nairobi urban slum survey adolescent males are more than 20 times likely to engage in drugs and 5 times more likely to consume alcohol than girls. In addition, being out of school increases the risk of alcohol and drug abuse. I talked to Councillor Jane and these were her sentiments. Drug abuse is affecting many Kenyans, mostly our youths. Youths in some areas seem to be affected by this menace. I decided to do counseling for the youths in Mavare slums out of my own will. I had a relative who was once in drugs and it is at this point of life when I decided to quit my job at Moya Mission Hospital as a counselor in the hospital so that I would take care of my relative. I have been doing this for the last 3 years and I am happy with the result so far. I would advise parents to encourage their children to attend educative seminars during holidays to avoid immoral activities. When these young people result into drug abusing activities, they not only harm themselves but also the society at large. For example, when they start indulging themselves in activities such as stealing, it is from us that they steal from. Mr. Justus Wanjohi is one of the subchiefs at Madare area and this is what he shared with me. So the most uh, abusive drug in uh, my sublocation is bangi and uh, we have been dealing with it. Uh, we have 
so far we have managed to arrest uh, seven suspects and already their cases have been summarized in the court and uh, they have already been sentenced. Uh, maximum penalty they were given one year, uh, that is one year in jail term. Eh? Mm. The advice uh, maybe you can give to the society is that they should, they should stop using the drug because it has a long term impact to the society and especially the, 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 the drug users. It is when these things enter high school, that is, when they are at their adolescent stage, that they face additional social, emotional and educational challenges. At the same time, they may be exposed to a greater availability of drugs, drug abusers and social activities involving drugs. These challenges can increase the risk that they will abuse alcohol, tobacco and other substances. Miss Jennifer talks about her journey in drugs. Uh, myself, I was in drugs for about three to four years and I was influenced by a person and through an organization, I was taken in a rehab center for around five years and within those five years, I was back again to my living normal and I thank the organization and I think that according to what I saw in the rehab, it's really a good thing for drug to stop. In most cases, drug victims start by abusing small drugs such as alcohol. Parents usually influence their children to drug taking. The examples the Guardian sets and the values they communicate mostly determines children's likeliness to drug abuse. Children are more likely to abuse alcohol if their parents abuse alcohol or are alcoholics. And they are likely to use alcohol to cope with stress. I talked to Anne Madhu, who has been an alcoholic for the last 20 years, and this is what she had to say. I was introduced to alcohol drinking by my father when I was barely 10 years old. We, we grew up in Thika. My dad was working uh, in, with Thika Municipal Council. He was a senior administration officer. And uh, a party at her, at her home was not complete without alcohol. So I started off, I was started off with Muratina, which was uh, considered a harmless African brew. So actually he used to give me a glass and tell me, sip, Maito, this one is not meant for foxes, it's meant for human beings. So I would actually sip. And I saw nothing wrong with it. I mean, there was no way my dad could have given me poison. Nakada director George Achola pointed out that alcohol consumption accounted for 4 million users, tobacco 2.7 million, while more than 700 people abused drugs. He said that this has the potential to negate all the health, socio-economic and political gains if nothing is done urgently. A study done on youth and alcohol and drug abuse victims in Nairobi County by students from Kenyatta University showed that the habit had largely contributed to poor academic performance, high dropout rates in schools or college, accidents and health complications including liver cirrhosis and high risk of contracting HIV and AIDS. Psychologist Dennis Kenya continues to explain. So the truth, the truth is, as teenagers transform into youths, their social atmosphere changes and the pressure and the pressure to use the drugs mounts on them. So we always say that there are, there are several stages of drug abuse. Number one, we have the experimentation stage. So in this stage, you may find teens and youths participating in underage use of drugs. Stage two is what we call the regular use or the social use. So at this stage, you begin to see a regular pattern. This is just for the purposes of socializing. The third stage is what we call the substance abuse or the risky behavior. So at this stage, one experiences persistent substance abuse. So at this stage, close relationships may be affected and negative consequences at school and work may be seen and even possible legal problems with the government or the legal entities. The last stage, which is number four, is the addiction or the chemical dependency stage. So at this stage, the youths and the teens, use of drugs may have progressed to what we call the addiction stage, which is a very chronic disease and needs time to treat. Parents are said to have somehow contributed to this menace of drug abuse. Some contribute by not looking at the activities their children engage themselves in. Because of society's acceptance of drinking, parents too often forget that alcohol, beer and wine are drugs too. And this has led to the increasing drinking habits in their children. I talked to Ruth, a single parent to a teenage daughter, and this is what she had to say. 
I have a daughter who is 16 years old. She's in high school right now. My daughter is an outgoing person and she likes to attend parties with her friends. I never knew she used to abuse alcohol until after some time when I discovered that she abuses alcohol. I found out when I started seeing bottles of beers in her bedroom. It was a shock to me when I discovered this because I knew I had raised my daughter in good morals. After finding out, I decided to talk to her as a mother. And it is after this that I saw her reform. She's never taken alcohol since then and I would like to encourage parents to be checking the activities their children engage in to avoid having their children get trapped in substance abuse. The most common threat of teenage drinking is that very often youngsters have a tendency to underestimate the potential of alcohol beverages and to overestimate their ability to drive. Teenagers will differentiate between hard liquor, beer and wine without realizing that though these beverages differ in alcohol percentages, the amount of alcohol consumed per standard drink is nearly equal no matter which drink it is. Beatrice is such one teenager and she narrates to me her experience. Okay, I started abusing cigarettes. I later moved to small drugs like alcohol, then later on to hard drugs like heroin and cocaine. Drugs have really ruined my life in that at some point I wanted to commit suicide and even attempted to drop out of school. I have really influenced much of my friends mm -hmm. to be then of drugs, but I'm hoping to get better. Advertisement by the media is also a great contributing factor to this problem. Culturally, as children approach and enter adolescence, they are exposed to information and drug. And it is during this stage of exploration and by the time they enter secondary schools, as long as they believe and see most of their peers using drugs or approving drug use, they will be more likely to use drugs themselves. I talked to Steve Okumu on phone, an advertising expert, and these were his sentiments. To a certain extent, we can argue that the, the advertiser may not necessarily care about the consequences. The other thing that we have to put in mind is the fact that advertisers cannot advertise drugs outright. So the only way that the youth may partake of drugs in uh, products is when there are elements of the said drug uh, in the said product, and based on advertising, the youth appreciates it and takes it more. So you look at an example of Coca-Cola. People mm -hmm. say there is uh, Coke in Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. I don't know how true that is, but then Coca-Cola is addictive, just like cocaine is addictive. And what brings this? It's brought about by the fact that you partake a lot of it. Mm. You can attribute this to the fact that you watch many advertisements by Coca-Cola. Catholic morality family rejects whatever use of illegal drugs. In fact, John Paul II has referred to pushers as merchants of death and once potential drug users against using substances that offer illusion of liberty and false promises of happiness. The Pope notes that it is always illicit because it involves an unjustified and irrational abduction of our capabilities to think, choose and act as persons. To get a clear picture of what the church thinks about drugs, I talked to Father Raphael Kanga on phone and these were his sentiments. The Catholic Church is very clear on uh, drug abuse in relation to respect of human life and health. That any abuse, whether it is of food, drugs, medicine, anything, it is gravely evil. And that's why it instructs its faithful that they should abstain from any abuse of the above items which I've already mentioned. Because substance abuse and criminal offenses are highly interrelated, Identifying substance abusing youth in the juvenile justice system is an important first step for intervening in both their substance abuse and their delinquent behavior. Identifying the reasons as to why the youths abuse drugs, followed by effective interventions, 
help prevent further illicit drug abuse and delinquency. Also, identifying drug victims can be a constructive means of helping youth overcome denial in their substance abuse. My name is Rosma Duku, producing this documentary for Tangaza.